Hello, welcome to another episode of Jedi Dragoon Makes, episode 22. And I had this all prepared and then blank mine. Anyway, I've been very busy crocheting this week, so much so that I had to, well, these past two weeks, I crocheted so much my arm started hurting, so I had to stop for a day. That was fun. Um, but I've been enjoying what I've been doing. I've been watching videos, getting a little bored of watching yarn videos, but that's just me. I have a short attention span. It's like this. So, I have some finished objects for you guys. Um, so, let's get into that. Um, first thing, I've been making hats because I, yeah, I have a laundry basket on the floor. <laughs> floor, I mean ground. I'm outside. This is my backyard. I live in Ohio. Um, I'm north of Columbus. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and I have lived here at this place since, well, that's unexpected. Sorry, wind changed directions and I have the world's most wobbliest tripod. So, please bear with me. <laughs> oh, this is just going to be fun again. <laughs> Okay, so I'm more relaxed this time. But anyway, so I live north in north central Ohio. Um, I've lived here since. <sighs> yeah, figures, truck. I've lived here since high school, so at this location, except for a few years when I first got married. So let's get into yarn because that's probably why you're watching, not to hear about my life. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, first thing I finished was, um, I showed this to you as a whip last time, but I have finished my Ross hat in the color Jazz Stripes in Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn. And here, I'll put it on for you because I like my hats, but this will not stay on very long because it's supposed to get up in the 80s today. But yeah, it starts out with this like neon green and that and then goes to this uh, aquamarine and navy and then navy aquamarine green pink and navy and white and navy and onward it's striped up really nice I'm really happy with this and I love this pattern it's quickly the two hats I've done has become my favorite uh, hat pattern um, Ross it smells like yarn created it and I just never knit it because I always did the barley hat pattern and I don't know I said I'd try his and when I saw it only called for one set of one size needles instead of two I was like yeah we're going to try that one and it fits great it fits my head perfectly and I found out it fits my six-year-old daughter's head which her head is kind of small so if she grows a bit it'll grow with her it fits her head all the way up to my husband's head his is a little bigger than mine show notes are blowing around <laughs> okay so one thing you should know about central ohio i'm getting distracted it happens i'm sorry i apologize we'll get back to yarn in one sec one thing you should know about central ohio we're up on a plateau so we get wind um it may not be that way in other parts of ohio but we get wind it's like a constant breeze or sometimes we get even straight winds so if the camera jiggles or the table jiggles or something that's what's going on um, but anyway, so yeah, I, I'm really loving this pattern because you use one set of needles, you don't have to switch, and it does a nice uh, decrease on top, a nice little triangle. No, star, star pattern. And like I said, this yarn really striped up nice. I really enjoy like this. So that's what that was the first thing I finished, and then my daughter and I went shopping. As I told you last time and she wanted some she picked out some yarn for a hat I wasn't sure about it but when it's your daughter and it's going to be her hat you go with it so this is what she picked out I actually like this I'm not sure I would wear it because it's a little too pastel for me but it's for her it's called sunset which I can see and if you look closely there's actually some blue green dark purple pink 
it's all kind of faded stone wash look and there's some more and there's some orange in here it's it's like really nice it's striped up and it's it's pretty uh here i'll go ahead and put it on like i said this is for her and it'll pop right back to you right shape but yeah as you can see there Sorry, I'm still perfecting weaving in ends. I've been knitting since 1999, and I'm still horrible at weaving in ends. If any of you have trouble with it, feel good. It's just very hard sometimes for some of us. But anyway, yeah, it. I don't know. Yeah, you can kind of see, see the blue right here, and there's green, and there's purple and pink. Yeah, it's. Uh, I love this yarn. Hobby Lobbies, I love this yarn and the color Sunset. And it's real pretty. It works up real nice. Um, so she loves it. She's happy with it. It's big enough that she can grow with it. Or if she gets tired of it, I can wear it if the kids misplace my hat again. Uh, if you ever go onto my Ravelry page, which I'm Jedi Dragoon on there, and look and see all the hats I have made, I have that hat and one other that have not disappeared. I have ones made out of, well, one got shrunk. The other one I don't know what happened to. Anytime I use like 100% uh, wool or super wash wool or something real expensive, it disappears. So I've just started going with acrylic because <laughs> this is 100% acrylic yarn. This is acrylic and my acrylic hats don't disappear, but my expensive 100% wool ones, I don't know where they are. I have no clue so we're sticking with acrylic there's my yarn snobs cringing but that's what the if they're going to disappear i'm not going to spend like 30 dollars for a skein of yarn just for it to disappear on me anyway so i finished those two so those are both the ross pattern i highly recommend it it's a great pattern it's easy it's simple most knit hat patterns are you're just doing a basic stockinette stitch but <laughs> I, I don't get into complicated. I tried because I thought, oh, I should try to get even more complicated with my knitting and my crocheted. <sighs> Sorry, I have allergies really bad. I love people who talk about seasonal allergies. No, not me. Mine are year round. And I've talked about them in the past. I'm not going to go into it. I have allergies. Hi. So, Highly recommend it. Most hat patterns are pretty simple. I thought I'd get into complicated knitting and crocheting and all that to be like everybody else. I don't enjoy it. Give me basic. Give me simple. Give me stuff that looks complicated but is easy to memorize. Which my next project will show you. I'm good. Okay. This next pattern is uh, called the virus shawl. I didn't look up who it's by. Um... And the truth is, it's a chart, or I think there's a tutorial by Fiber Spider uh, online, so you can check him out, I guess, and watch his tutorial. I don't really watch him, I just know he has a tutorial. But anyway, this, here, let me move my chair, is the virus shawl. As you can see, it's quite big. And for me, uh, for even me, who's kind of wide-shouldered and plus size, it does fit. I put a pin right here. Uh, I have another one. This one I'm not keeping, but I put a shawl pin right here, and it keeps it nice in place. Okay. This was a bad... Oh, nope. There we go. See? Nice sized as you can see and it turned and once you get closer it's like this real pretty color it goes from ooh, I can get some sunlight I think dark green to lighter to uh, green mixed with blue to blue to red dark green and back to light this color I really I have another cake of this I might make it into a uh, hat Ross hat it's a lion brand ferris wheel which I haven't seen a lot of people except Ross talk about. And it's um, it's a beautiful yarn. It's super soft. It's squishy. 
I love it. And it it makes amazing stuff. It looks gorgeous. And um, this is going to be a prayer shawl I'm going to donate to church. So, and I used a size K hook on this. I didn't use a size K hook on this. Hmm. Okay, I started off using a size K hook, but I think I switched to a size I. <laughs> so, it somewhere in here, I changed hook sizes. But yeah, it works up quickly. And you can fold it up pretty neatly. Or at least I'm attempting to. So, that's another finished object. That I used one skein of Ferris wheel yarn on that. I expected to use two, but... I used one and I still have like a little cake like that left so I'll toss that into a scrap blanket um, okay the next thing that's my finished object let me check my notes yep next thing that's my finished object is something I put this on a Facebook group I, got, I belong to a couple crochet groups and I put this on there everybody went nuts over it it's a dishcloth and it's not even that hard it's this. This is the... Okay, so I really don't use a pattern. I may have looked it up when I first tried making these, but it's a cornered corner dishcloth. Just look up a tutorial on corner to corner. Figure out your hook size, because I use the size I. Hold on. Golf cart going down the street. Um... One sec. Yeah, but I just used the size I crochet hook. Went corner to corner. The color is Harvest. It's Hobby Lobby's I Love This Cotton. And it goes from this dark red to orange to... There's like two shades of red, if you can see. There's this darker one, and then this lighter one, and this gray color, gray red color. It's really pretty. And like I said, I'm, it's just a dishcloth. Um, and like I've said in the past, my dishcloths are never used for dishcloths. What we use dishcloths for are pot holders. They work great. Um, they actually work better than some of like the oven mitt pot holders because they don't seem to wear out at the edges and they last forever. And after we wash this, it'll shrink up. That's why I like this pattern. I like this and the granny one, I've done a few others. And they shrink up and get weird. Like, I'll make them long enough and then they shrink. So, but this this one, it stays the right size and stays the same shape pretty much after wash. And it gets a little denser, so that makes it nice for grabbing hot pots and pans and stuff like that. So, those are my finished objects. Now for my whips. Because I got a lot of whips. I finished a lot of stuff. Okay, four objects. Probably not a lot, but I started a lot, and some stuff you're not going to see that you saw last video because I didn't work on it, so I'm not going to show it again until I work on it again. And one thing I started, I think I'm going to change, but that's later on. Okay. So, I discovered Crystal of Bag O'Day. A lot of people, crocheters and all that, love her. Um, I like her. I just hadn't really got into her. So, I started watching some of her tutorials and stuff like that. Because she made a sweater jacket that I really liked. Which, I started, it's in the bag, so it's in the basket so you can see it. But it got me thinking. Um, I am getting to a point this time. Trust me. Um, my daughter wanted me to make her a bumblebee cardigan. She wanted a, card, she wanted a cardigan that looked like yellow and black bee stripes. And I had to figure that out. And I'm like... I didn't want to knit it because sometimes I mess up with, I don't know, I knit one sweater and I got to work on my knitting. But I can crochet like nothing else. I can get that done quick. The three kids sweaters I've crocheted. So, I watched one of hers and then I kind of went and tr started figuring out stuff. So what I figured out was, I figured out, 
how many inches around she was. Added some extra inches for ease slash growing. Which, she's a skinny little thing. I don't know how much she's going to grow. But, it has, ex it has like four inches of ease or something like that. I don't know. I figured it up. But, if it's a little big, that's fine. But anyway, so, this is the back. I'm doing like three rows of double crochet um, and three three rows of yellow in this buttercup by I love Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton. Not I love this cotton. I love this yarn. This is the color buttercup and this is the color black. I'm just double checking the color. Black. The other labels disappeared but I remember the color. And I'm just using a size I crochet hook. Um, and I crocheted like. I have it on my phone. Give me one sec here. I should have known I needed to write this down, but I didn't. For some unknown reason. Um, anyway, so. Anyway, I measured her at 21 inches, and I think this is like 23 or 24 or something, so. I'm working on that. It's just going to be pretty much double crochet for right now. I'll uh, keep you updated, and I'm going to try to get some work done on this in the next two weeks, because it's starting to get a little cooler here, and she's going to need a jacket for in the mornings and stuff, and she'll actually wear my stuff. Actually, I'm figuring if I make her like a cardigan that she can take off, she'll like that better. So. I started that. I did not think this through. <laughs> oh, I don't want to set that there. <laughs> so, in addition, oh, that's that used up quite a bit of that. So, in addition to her cardigan, I side follow Crystal's tutorial exactly, only using my measurements because I'm like a two X two. I have a fifty inch bust. So, it was perfectly quiet when I started recording, but I'm not going back inside because I got kids watching TV and stuff. It's a Saturday. Uh, yeah, it's September, I looked earlier, September 12th. So, I started working on Crystal Little of Bago Days. Uh, most recent cardigan sweater jacket and this is what I got so far this is the back and you crochet across I got like 93 stitches here because I had to make it longer because I want it down past my butt because I have a tendency my shirt tends to ride up so this is the yarn I'm using as you if that's blowing out I don't know why that's blowing out I'm outside I have the perfect light the yeah that's the that's more yeah that's more true color but, but you can see it has some flex in it. This is, I got this, if you watched my past videos, you saw I ordered yarn from Hobium. And that was one of my first yarn haul videos. I don't do them that much because I can't afford them. So, this is Kartopu Melange Wool Tweed. And if you want to know the color... It's M1380. I have no idea what color this is anymore. You can probably go on their website and find out, but it's green. And this is like one of my favorite colors to wear. I, I look really good in green, so I usually wear a lot of green. I like purple. I look good in purple, but green and stuff like that is what I really look good in. So, I bought this because it's soft, fuzzy. I really like it. It's really soft. It's like... 77% acrylic, 20% wool, and 3% viscose, which is the little tweedy bits. So, it's working up really nice. Um, I'm making a lot of progress on that. Hopefully, I have more done next time. Uh, and just so if you're curious, when I started this, 
I started this uh, I started this Friday. Yeah, this is what I got done since Friday. As you can tell, I've been working on other stuff. I had to finish up that shawl, that virus shawl I showed you, it's been sitting in in no man's land for months since February it looks like. Okay. On to other stuff. Talk about yarn. Focus on yarn. <laughs> okay. And I went on to my group, a Facebook group, because I decided I wanted to make me a granny square poncho. I decided I'd make it because it makes me happy. I like it. I like granny squares. Some people may not. I love them. Um, that and I love making them because they're easy. So I was talking about that. And then I happened to be searching on Lime Brand's website and... I found a pattern for a granny square cardigan. They did it in cotton yarn, which I'm not going to do, because that's me. And I already had some granny squares made, and I checked the gauge, and my gauge was the same as the pattern, so I just had to add another round. And I am working on making a granny square cardigan out of this. Yes, I did not weave in the ends. But since I'm going to be sewing this, I kind of don't want to because I can reuse these for sewing it together. <laughs> uh, except for these. I'll have to weave these in. But I just, I didn't feel like it. So, yeah, it's a simple granny square with the, actually, if you look here, that's the same yarn as this. Because I was trying to use up this. Um, I'm trying to use up most of the skeins of yarn I get just to kind of be frugal in that. So anyway, I need to make 29 of these. I got this one. And this is a different yarn. Um, this this yarn and this yarn. This is Mainstays Purple Multi from Walmart and this is Red Heart Super Saver Stripes in Polo, I believe it is. My husband and kids got me this for Christmas, so I wanted to use it in something that I'd wear so they could see I I liked it and used it. And if you're curious, my favorite color is purple. So anyway, I'm working on this. So this is the second square I did. And this is a... Oh. And this here is some Bernat uh, striping yarn. I'm not sure what it's called, but it's Bernat Stripes. And some purple color. I didn't look it up beforehand. Um, I'm not sure if I have the label or not. But yeah, this is Bernat Stripes. I had in my stash. I went stash hunting. And those two yarns are the same thing as... Yeah, same thing as this. And as you can see, these two squares look completely different because of the stripes. And I'm loving how this is looking. So, and I'm just using purple as the tie together color in this. So I got three squares, so I need 26 more and some half squares. And I may have to make a few more squares because I'm, I was looking and it comes off. The sweater hits at your waist and knowing me, I'm probably going to want it longer. So I'll probably have to make another row of these at the bottom. To make it long enough for me because I like longer stuff because I have hips and a butt and all my shirts tend to just ride up over them as you saw when I was showing you the shawl it, it's just something that happens I keep thinking of uh, one of my favorite British TV shows called are you being served and in the men's department at, or in men's or women's department in those in that show because it's set in a British department store in the 70s and the customers are always saying that something's too long or whatever and they're like oh it'll ride up with where <laughs> yeah I like my British comedies I'm sorry <laughs> it, it it's just something I enjoy and every time I say something is not long enough I'll think of that what something's not long enough or short enough it'll ride up with where or ride down with where <laughs> <laughs> they did just to get the sale, but. And, okay, we'll just take these in order of, okay, well. Ugh. Do not use a laundry basket for podcasting. <laughs> it doesn't work very well, but it's the only thing I got. <laughs> oh, 
Oh no. Okay, okay, it's not stuck. And see if I can find the unused cake of this. At least I don't have the huge laundry basket. Anyway, so I was at Joanne Fabrics this week, gained some more yarn for another project I'm going to show you. And they had this Lion Brand Cupcake on clearance for $3.97. So I picked up this. It's called Happy Dance. I was going to get the other colors, but they were $4.97. This was $3.97. I'm like, I'll go with this. Because I want to make some baby blankets and shawls for church. So I picked this up. And it goes from this dark orange. Here, let's see if I can point with. Okay. There. It's not really that. No. So. Look, I'm a teacher now. <laughs> it goes from this dark orange to. And fades into this yellow and then this green. Let's just call this Ross green. And then this blue and this white and this gray and back into this yellow and orange. So. I picked up two skeins of this. This one, which you can tell is exactly the same. I cast on the, no, I'm not going to show you my knitting this time. Go back, watch the last video and you'll see me knitting or crocheting, whichever. I did both. So this, I cast this on. This is my favorite. Okay. Let's admit this is the first knit pattern. Okay. Most people, they start off knitting. They do like garter stitch or a garter stitch scarf. The book I got, they're like, your first pattern should be a checkerboard uh, knitting pattern. So I learned how to knit doing, they're like, you need to learn how to purl anyway. Let's do, you learn how to knit stitch and purl stitch and you get a nice uh, checkerboard pattern. And it's also a very forgiving one if you mess up. So I cast on this checkerboard baby blanket. It's, it's supposed to be like 20 inches by 30 inches. And I've only just got past the first row of uh, checkerboard. As you can see, I switched. I'm now onto the purl stitch. And this is the knit. And it's a very simple, easy pattern. I love knitting this. Um, I've just been busy crocheting. So I, this is all I've gotten. But yeah, I, I'm loving this. I'm using size 7 U.S. needles. And these are just some Susan Boyle needles. Um, I've attended church all my life, and when I started knitting, every time somebody finds out I knit or crochet, they give me needles and yarn and all this. And so I have a bunch of these, like, just plain old Susan Boyle. And I was like, I'll just use this. See if I, I was like, oh, let's hope this is long enough. It's long enough. It'll work up fine. I can keep it on this. The only thing is, is my son likes to get into my needles and yarn. He wants me to teach him how to knit, but then he gets frustrated and it doesn't work out very well. <clears throat> so, you can find this pattern free on the Lion Brand website. And I really recommend it. It's good for beginners because all it is is knit and purl. And it's pretty forgiving. You, you can probably even, if you're really good, count the rows without using a row counter. I use a row counter because that's just how I am. But anyway, yeah, it, it's a pretty easy basic pattern. Oh, I gotta talk faster. Light's changing. <laughs> I'm almost done. Don't worry. And the next thing I worked on, I don't know if I showed you these last time or not, but I added some black around the edge. And just FYI, Ross from Smells Like Yarn does not like granny squares. But still, I'm sorry, Ross, if you're watching this, uh, these are still the Ross Granny Square <laughs> colors because they are these bright neons and orange and, and they have this black and pink daigle yarn in the middle and yeah, this is wild. But yeah, this is, this is. I'm just going to be making these, adding a black border, and tossing them in a tote in the bedroom. And once I get enough, I'll sew them together and give them to church for somebody who needs it. But yeah, this is the this is the, the finished uh, 
granny square. I used a size eye hook. I did one, two. I'm horrible at counting. Please be patient. I did eight rounds. I think it's about eight inches around. So it's pretty good size. So I have that one. And then I had a little left. And I found more really bright neon yarn in my stash. I don't know why I have this neon colored yarn in my stash. I don't do neons. Neons are not my favorite. So <laughs> I'm just making these wild colors. I'll probably sew them together, make an afghan, and I'm probably going to either give it to church or my daughter will claim it. Probably my daughter will claim it. That's her jam. Okay, I got another work in progress down in here. Please be patient. I got to dig a minute. I think I got all the squares. I might be missing. Nope, I got all the squares. Okay, I forgot the catalog picture. But Hirschner's had... Sorry. My nose is running. I should have taken an allergy pill a day, but... Sometimes I take my allergy medicine and it gives me a headache. Some days I don't take it, it gives me a headache. So I just... I just didn't take it day and said heck with it. Anyway, so Hershner's had this really pretty. If I had her score, okay, yeah. Um. Okay, there might be a slight freak out in a minute if something gets a little too close. Crap. I have a slight fear. I probably should mention right now. Please go away. Please go away. Please, please. Okay, I'm putting the lid on. You can't get in there. Please go, go. Okay. I'm scared of bees. Right now, there is a yellow jacket. Okay. This video might get cut short. <laughs> like, really short. Go away. Okay, take the Gatorade. Take the Gatorade. Go to your Gatorade. Leave me alone. Okay, let's try to get this. Okay. Ah. I, um, I'm trying here, people. <laughs> oh, it's on my camera. Oh, okay. I, I apologize. I have an unreasonable fear of bees. It is now on my Gatorade bottle. Okay, let's try to continue on. I have had total freakouts before, so <laughs> please, camera, quit moving, quit moving. Ah! <sighs> oh. <sighs> Welcome back. Okay, so the backyard was a bust because uh, yellow jacket started flying around and. Unless you want to see me have a complete freak out, which I now have video evidence of me freaking out, um, you're not going to see that video. Because <laughs> um, I'm terrified of bees. I, it's just something I deal with. Um, most people don't deal with that on that much, but I do. Uh, so, anyway, I was telling you about the afghan I was recreating from a pattern I saw on Hershner's website. So, okay, I'm coming down. <laughs> and the pattern is called the Sidonia Afghan. It's on their website. It's a kit you can order. Um, I wasn't buying the kit. Uh, it's a little much for me right at that time. So, I decided I'd go ahead and get my stash, see what I had, and recreate it. So, the first square I have, okay, they're all tangled together now, um, is this granny square in orange, orange and this uh, Aaron Fleck by Red Heart, and it's just like this tweedy white color, 
if you yeah you can see that and this is the first square I did it's one two three four five six seven eight eight rounds and I'm using a size eye hook I don't know if that's the right gauge or not because I don't have the pattern but that's what I'm using so that's the first square and the second square is kind of unique and something I've never done but I had to look up to see how you did it it's the mosaic granny square and it looks really complicated but it's pretty easy with front post stitch and all that and it's in this uh, Hobby Lobby I love this yarn autumn stripe in this green burnt orange maroon and brown color and I just have it edged in that uh, red heart air and fleck again and it's also the same amount of squares as that I'm hoping it stretches out once I get it all sewn together uh, it probably will because that's usually what happens and then the next square I did well, not the next, but this is the next one I'm showing. I'm doing the easy ones. This is an easy one. It's just maroon yarn. I think it's all red heart, and this is a red heart air and fleck. Ooh, you can get a real good idea of what it looks like with that. I don't know why the light's working for that right now, but we're going with it. So that's the next one. And then I have one more like that. That It's a green. It's a hunter green and the air and fleck. And yeah. So I'm using a size eye hook. And then it had this square. This was interesting. So I had two yellows and two whites. And then I had to crochet around. And I'd never done anything like that. I think it turned out pretty well for never doing it. And I think it looks really neat. It's it's a it's a pretty easy pattern that I'm figuring out. Um, but I'm loving it. It's going to make a very nice afghan. And the fun part will be... The fun part, I should have just left it alone. I should have just left it alone. The fun part will be um, figuring out the crocheted border for it. Uh, it's probably not going to be exactly like the pattern. I've never done a crocheted border. I've always just sewn stuff together. And if I do do a crocheted border, it's single crochet or double crochet. So that's all my works in progress. Now, Michael's... I think I remember telling you I wasn't, I probably wasn't going to get any of the Karen cakes unless they went on sale or something. Well, Michael's has sale the next week. They had a buy one, get one 50% off. So I went ahead and most people are getting like two different colors. Me, I wanted, I said I get two the same color because I want to make a big blanket for my bed. Still working out how I'm doing that, but. So I got. <laughs> Mine's a little messed up, mainly because I messed with it, but, yeah, is a Karen anniversary cake, and this is big. Um, this is the color, let's show that in because it looks a little better. This is the color mint, mint shindig. It's this gray, I'd say aquamarine, teal some color like that then green and then gray but like I said I got two of these because I wanted to make a big blanket for the bed and we have a king size bed so I got that and of course it was if you spent $50 you got free shipping <laughs> so of course those together equaled like 42 I'm like I don't want the free shipping so I got me Two of these Karen skinny cakes. I really like these things. So I got two of them so I can make me a good size project. And I got the blueberry pudding. It's this uh, dark blue, light blue, gray, purple, white. And it's really pretty. I don't know what I'm going to make with this yet, but it'll turn into something. And I told you about being at Joann's because I was picking up more of the air and fleck because apparently I only had two skeins and I was going through it pretty quick. Um, so while I was there, I found this. These are usually 10 bucks. Once I got some for like four for $10 that Lion Ram was clearancing. So this was $7.47, which I thought was pretty good. So I got one of these shawl and a cakes. And this color is Moonstone. 
And this is definitely going to be one of my shawls that I make for church. Um, and this is this real pretty maroon, um, like brownish, and then blue, and then light blue. Yeah. So that's going to be a real pretty shawl. And it's nice and you can see how sparkly it is. So that's going to be, that's, that was what I got along with the two, um, Lime Brand Mandala cakes that I got. And then yesterday we're at Walmart and we're wa I went over to the craft aisle because that's what I do. <laughs> and I wasn't even going to toss this in because I buy these little things all the time. But I picked me up a Peaches and Cream Stripey from Walmart. And it's the color Green Stripes. And as you can see, it's white, blue, aquamarine, green, and chartreuse. So, yeah. That's going to be a dishcloth. And I think that's all that I've worked on and done. So, thank you for bearing with me. I'm sorry about the freak out outside. Um, it happens. Uh, like I said, I, I'm not allergic to bees. I'm not deathly allergic to bees. If I get stung, I will not swell up like a pumpkin or anything like that. I just have this irrational fear so and it's not fun to watch me freak out so that's why i came inside and we've got this video done <sighs> thanks for watching i'm going to give up at this point and call this a podcast and i hope you guys have a better day than i've been having right now <laughs> uh i'll probably try to do this on my laptop next time so thank you for watching like and subscribe talk to you later bye